Brethren, this is a, a great occasion. Tens of thousands of bearers of the Holy Priesthood gathered together to hear instructions from the presidency of the Church. I was greatly impressed by the president's remarks. I'm glad he said what he did. As I listened to him, I was taken back some quarter of a century as I stood by the side of President Grant one night. He stood on my right and he put his left hand over my shoulder and he, we'd been talking about some problems, some criticism of the presidency of the church. And he said, my boy, you always keep your eye on the president of the church. And if he tells you to do something wrong and you do it, the Lord will bless you for it. And then he said, but you don't need to worry. The Lord will never let his mouthpiece lead this people astray. I haven't forgotten that. I think I have been faithful to that charge ever since. <clears throat> we hold the priesthood. We're a covenant people. The Lord gave to um, Abraham a great covenant when he promised him a mighty posterity and told him that all the peoples of the earth would be blessed by that posterity and made many other promises that I won't take time to mention, but he said that that occasion that through obedience to the gospel that his seed would teach would be given eternal life. And ever since the days of Abraham, his people have been known by those who understand the gospel as children of the covenant. I'll just take a few minutes here to review with you one of the covenants. The covenant that belongeth to the priesthood. The 84th section of the Doctrine and Covenants talks about the priesthood, talks about the time when the sons of Aaron will offer a sacrifices again, and talks of the priesthood of Aaron and the Melchizedek priesthood uh, of, as though it connects it with Moses. And that explains this first statement in the, that I want to read you. The Lord says that whosoever is faithful unto the obtaining of these two priesthoods of which I've spoken and the magnifying of their callings are sanctified by the Spirit unto the renewing of their bodies. Now, I believe that's true. I think that men and boys who magnify their callings in the priesthood have a change wrought in their bodies. I believe it was this morning President Lee was talking in the welfare meeting and telling about someone who saw President McKay, some stranger, and said to him, are you a prophet of God? And President McKay's answer was, you look into my face and get the answer. I have heard the story about President Joseph F. Smith, the father of our present beloved president, who was down in Arizona to some function where the governor was there and other prominent people, and they wanted to have their picture taken with the president of the church, President Joseph F. Smith. So he graciously stood but with them while they their picture was taken, and when they stepped back into the crowd, the governor said to one of our brethren, 
You know, when I stood out there by that man, I felt like a thief. He could feel the power in this uh, great man. Whosoever is faithful unto the obtaining of these two priesthoods, of which I have spoken, and the magnifying of their calling, are sanctified by the Spirit unto the renewing of their bodies. They become the sons of Moses and of Aaron, and the seed of Abraham, and the church and the kingdom, and the elect of God. The prophet used to teach repeatedly to make our callings and our election sure. If we want to do that, we'll have to magnify our callings in the priesthood. And then the, the, the Lord says, And also all they who receive this priesthood receiveth me, saith the Lord. Now, I think that means those who receive the officers of the priesthood who are appointed to represent the Lord. All those who receive this priesthood receiveth me, saith the Lord. For he that receiveth my servants receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth my Father, and he that receiveth my Father receiveth my Father's kingdom. Therefore all that my Father hath shall be given unto him. And this is according to the oath and the covenant which belongeth to the priesthood. President Smith frequently says in prayer and in council that he prays for and hopes that we will be true and faithful to every covenant and responsibility which rests upon us. We receive this by covenant. Therefore, says the Lord, all those who receive the priesthood receiveth this oath and covenant of my Father, which he cannot break, break neither can it be moved. So God has made a covenant with us, that grants us eternal life if we keep the covenant. And that is what, what we promise in the covenant is to magnify our callings. And he can't break his promise, but what about us? Well, the Lord says, Whoso breaketh this covenant after he hath received it, and altogether turneth therefrom, shall not have forgiveness of sins or in this world or in the world to come. Now, I don't think that means the, they would have committed the unpardonable sin, but I think that we who have the priesthood and enter into the covenants that we enter into when we go into the waters of baptism and the covenants we make when, uh, in connection with the law of tithing and the covenants we make with respect to the word of wisdom, and the covenants we make in many other ways, and then refuse to live up to those covenants, will stand in jeopardy of losing the promise of eternal life. I have a witness to the truth of what President Smith said tonight about the leadership of this church, and they're representing the Savior of the world here, I know that there's power in the priesthood and that we can draw from heaven the power to do our work if we do the work as best we can ourselves. God help us to understand this and the great honor he's placed upon us by giving the priesthood, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.